Mini episode 1614 of the FDA Lounge is brought to you by Sportsology, delivering unconventional columns and webcasts about sports, TV, music, movies, and more. Follow them on the web at sportsology.com. The FDA Lounge. You want to schedule your life around it. A long time ago, on a gloomy, wet Cleveland spring night, two men stand alone amidst the late night drizzle. Their voices echo across the vacant station parking lot as they debate the merits of the great American radio show that have been missing for far too long. On that night, an idea was born. That idea became the FDH Lounge. Welcome to the FDH Lounge. Welcome to mini episode 1614 of the FDH Lounge. This is FDH managing partner Rick Morris here with our preview of Succession episode 4.7. Here's our top five notes of interest as we approach the end game. Number five, Bitey, WTF? This Shiv and Tom stuff is just going in all kinds of weird directions, and Matson's still not 100% out of the picture with her. Those pregnancy hormones are supercharged even if nobody else, including Tom, knows yet that she's got them. And while she may not know what she's doing in her personal life, her professional game is on point, pitting her brothers against each other and back-channeling with Matson like a mother. No pun intended. Number four. Is Matson's tasteless tweet a sign that he's going to melt down under the pressure? You live by the tweet, you die by the tweet. And Kendall baiting the billionaire bro over the line could be a tease of how the Roy brothers win this war and hold off the takeover. Number three. Roman's firing spree was as sudden as it was shocking. Trying to bring down a studio head and Jerry for the second time in mere days, and this time with it being his idea rather than him just being the messenger, was an unexpected turn. Granted, Roman's fury surfaced on the mountaintop with Matson, but that was after a long line of provocations and in defense of his father. The lesson that he appears to have taken from that moment is to let the aggression loose on those who dare to challenge him. And given his mommy issues, powerful women in particular seem to be provoking him more than ever these days. This isn't going to end well for him. Number two, Kendall just had the huge win that he's been chasing for the entire series. Up until the last minute, it still looked like he was headed for another huge L, but against all odds, his bullcrap landed on the mark. Granted, the liberties that he took to make it happen may yet catch up to him, but this is the moment that he really broke through. Will it last? Nothing good in this universe ever does. Number one, Logan's appearance at the beginning of the last episode made the subtext into text. He still looms over everyone else in this world. The toxicity that he inflicted upon all of them will burn as bright as ever while they are locked in this corporate world. Petty jealousies, old grievances, mommy issues, daddy issues, overcompetitiveness, entitlement, and probably a dozen more elements make for a poisonous stew. Each of the Roy kids has talent in one way or another, but they also have their own Achilles heels and they are working against each other in one way or another because of them. All of the silly overreactions in some corners of the fan base in the wake of Logan's death in episode 4.3 have proven to be wrong already. The show does not have a vacuum at its center without Logan pulling the strings, because, as his kids must have feared all along, he's still pulling them from beyond the grave, and it looks like he always will be. Thank you for joining us for this mini-episode of the FDH Lounge.